<laughs> that helps. Yeah. So, how it's, are you other than being overworked? Ah, uh, well, where's Santa Claus? He joined. Dr. Revis, how are you? I'm good. I hope you are. I am. <laughs> Hanging in there. Let me go out and come back in. Let me see if I can get my camera to work. Hey, Dr. We definitely Hamilton. Wanna, we want to see Dr. Revis. How are you? Santa's beautiful face. Hey, Dr. Hamilton. Hi, I'm glad to beautiful. see you. And everyone else on the screen. Welcome. Yes. Hey, there's a bunch of you. If you're hey, Hello. When Dr. Lamb throws a meeting, he throws a meeting, doesn't he? <laughs> Especially when it's me. Ah, huh? Look at this. There he is. There's Santa. Santa's on the scene. Woo. How is everybody? Did I mute everybody? We're great. Good. Good. Awesome. Where's Dr. Stedman? Who's supposed to be in charge of this? I think he had a board meeting or something tonight. Okay. All right. So who do we have with us tonight? We have all of our new folks here with us tonight. He said, this is her third. This will be the third time. Soon. So this is, let me take this off while I overheat here. Um, well, <laughs> welcome everybody. This is the, what is, is this the town hall for everybody or just the 601s? I think the 601, what do you think, Dr. Revis? Yes, yeah, just 601. That's what I thought, but I see Zach. I was going to do a, I was going to do a separate one with them next week, but they can hang around. Uh, if they want. Well, Doctor Bullis sent it to us, so maybe he just thought it was the wrong one because we can jump out if this isn't relevant. No, no, us. don't jump out. Let me let me uh, let me remind y'all of a couple things. I was going to wait till next week to meet with y'all on y'all's first. Well, Doctor Lamb, do you need do you need me tonight, or do you need? Yes, me? I need everybody. Okay, I need everybody. I'm not excused. All right, so. Just for you the tried, 605 though, people Stone. and Dr. Stone, who I know has some 605 people in the 730s, just as a reminder, I will do a town hall with y'all next Monday the 4th at 7 o'clock. I have it on my schedule because that's the first of the uh, deadline days. We always meet on that day. And so 7 p.m. next Monday the 4th. Remember, Monday the 4th is the first deadline day. You need all of your six evidences in. Those of you who are in 605, by next Monday the 4th, the day that we meet for our, we'll do a, we'll go over everything, everything for graduation, uh, the lineup, all those kinds of things. And I'll do a, a quick and dirty interviewing with y'all. And we'll talk about licensure and all those things next Monday. But just as a reminder to y'all, next Monday, December the 4th, I need all of your evidences to be in your portfolio. And then the following Monday on the 11th, I need for your portfolios to be done. Now, um, make sure that you look in your 605 shells for how to upload your competency folio into your DRF portfolio for evaluation. That's the last step on that. You build it out completely as a folio, a separate folio. And when it's done, you have to move it over to your DRF for final evaluation. It has to be in there when it goes to the state. There's a short video, about three and a half minutes, in your 605 shell on how to upload your competency folio in, into your DRF portfolio. Make sure you publish and share and get the link before you do that so that you can share that link with either of the people for licensure in order to upgrade your certificate or to share with a prospective employer. Make sure that you publish and share 
your competency folio before you upload it into your DRF portfolio. You should be able to go back, but sometimes you can't. Um, and so it's always best to be safe than sorry on that one. So again, for you 605s, thank you, Kathleen, Zach, two of our newest doctoral students. I hope things are going well for y'all. Um, because the table is not to be on. And so I'm glad that they're with us tonight. Um, they joined our 730 with Dr. Stone in the EDLS program this time. Um, I'll take a minute to get let them. Um, either one of you want to share your experiences, good or bad, joining the, the EDLS cohort. Um, other than they had to put up with me one weekend. Um, other than that, I think it's been pretty good. So I'll open the floor to both Zach and Kathleen, two of my favorites, by the way. Well, start, Kathleen. Sure. Um, I really like the doctoral program work. Um, I like the district focus and the more strategic leadership focus. Um, it just, it's been a lot of work. Um, I don't think I was fully prepared for how much work it was going to be finishing up the MSA program and starting the doctoral program, but... I just submitted, I think, mostly my last assignment for the doctoral program. So I think I'm kind of finaling things out. But it, it was a lot. It was a long semester. Now, remembering they, they were finishing up their, their portfolio for the MSA program and starting the doctoral program. Those of you who are thinking about joining this spring or summer, that will not be the case with y'all. Y'all just have the doctoral work. But thank you, Kathleen. I'm glad, I'm glad that you said it is a lot of work. Um, it, it the, the focus changes from school level to district level, and that makes it a lot more work. And that I'm really and so we, we want to do full disclosure. We really want you back. We want you into in the 730, uh, either in CNI or EDLS. But now it's no joke. Uh, they are quality programs, um, and it's not for the faint of heart. So we want everybody to enter into it fully knowing as, as much work as the MSA program is, it's that much and more in the doctoral program, but it's, it's worth it, folks. It's a great program. Zach, your, your thoughts? Um, Kathleen and I both started the MELS program in January. Uh, I've already accepted an assistant principalship position um, in August, and I started um, the doctoral program. Uh, once your leadership at the district office realizes that you're in a doctoral program, they're going to start to tag you for a lot of insight and input. Um, I will say that Gardner-Webb has one of the best programs I've been through. I actually started another MSA program and realized it wasn't for me. I also started another doctoral program and realized it wasn't for me. Gardner-Webb has given me all the support that I need, and I've appreciated that support, and I have so far, I've gotten a four on all my task stream evidences. That includes the one I just submitted for the doctoral program. Thank you, Zach. Um, Kathleen, is a, a Kathleen is a school psychologist, um, which is a little bit different than um, than a lot. Let me let me do this. If I can get this to work. That'll help. Um, and so I said that to say this, their perspective is a little bit broader because you know, Zach's in the role, Kathleen's a psychologist. Um, they tend to appreciate that, but Zach's exactly right. You, your, how you were viewed, will, not only will your perspective change, but the perspective people in your district have for you will change. It will become a more district-wide focus and perspective as well which will help you to move on up the ladder into jobs. Now, to what Zach said, I've told you before, there are cheaper places than Gardner-Webb. Um, you know, I am a product of state schools myself. Um, I, I got a, a, a small taste of private school in my postdoctoral um, and realized what the difference is. The difference is the support level. The work is much the same. No matter where you go, it's the support level. If you can do it on your own, there are cheaper places. But if you if you need that help and support, if, if that's something that you're interested in, you won't find any better folks than Dr. Stone and his group. 
Um, they do a great job supporting all of our students. For those of you who are just starting in the program, this is your first semester. It's not too late to start thinking about things like this. You second semester people coming up, um, you'll be done in the summer. You'll be needing to, to think about it, the fall before you know it. Um, it'll be time to start thinking about fall programs if you want to continue on. Uh, the best advice that I have to give you is once you start, don't stop until you get done. Uh, it's just too hard to, to start and stop and start and stop. It's, it's just too much. Uh, once you're in the mode and cranking it out, Stick with it until you're done. The beauty of the doctoral programs at Gardner-Webb is it's two years, six semesters of coursework, and you're through with that part, and then you're on to dissertation. And remember, they give you a coach, and they work with you. Um, they, they work with you from, from day one in the doctoral program. You will have dissertation support. Um, and you will have the cohorts that meet either across the state or in Charlotte. Um, I might even stop by and bring breakfast one Sunday morning, preach a little bit. You can't ever tell. Uh, it could happen. Um, Zach and, and Kathleen had to put up with that this semester, but um, we're all one one group, one family. Uh, we will support you from the MSA as well, um, and we'd love to have you back um, for 7.30. Dr. Stone, I don't need for you to stay all night, but one of the reasons why I wanted you, this group, obviously, they're beginners, but uh, – they, they'll be thinking about you before long, and I wanted to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and, and to put your plug in. Uh, you can do a better job than me for the EDLS program. And I won't take much time. I had the pleasure of teaching Kathleen and Zach, and I can tell you the MALES program prepares you extremely well for the doctoral program. So if you are thinking about it, and we'll talk more, and I'm going to put my information over in the chat in case there's anyone that wants to contact me. Uh, we do have a, a phenomenal, I think, doctoral program. It is designed to be a practical application. Uh, it is focused on the central office, but I'll be more than glad to talk with you about it. Uh, we've had some tremendous success. The sitting superintendent of Charlotte Mecklenburg County, uh, Charlotte Meck, is a, is a graduate. We have a number of superintendents and assistant superintendents and directors across the state who are Garner Webb graduates. So I say all that to tell you that Finishing a master's, take a breath and say congrats and pat yourself on the back and say congratulations because this is a major accomplishment. But then if you're ready to make that next jump, we have the program for you and we will be more than glad to talk to you about it. I'm not going to take much of your time because I know you've got town hall tonight, but I'll put my name and number in the chat. And if anyone ever wants to talk about it, it's a great program. Two and a half years of coursework, two more for dissertation. And I promise you, if you start this journey with you, with us, we will help you across the way with the coach and teachers and instructors until you march across the stage. And we have the great honor of calling you doctor. And just like Zach said, that will open doors. Whether you want to be a superintendent or you want to be a principal or you want to be someone in the central office, or even if you want to teach at the community college or the university level, having that doctor in front of your name will open a lot of doors. And as Zach said, even while you're going through the process, it will catch the attention of your district. They will see you as an up and coming uh, professional in their district. And, and I promise you, it will certainly make a difference for you. So I know you've got a lot on your mind right now just getting through the MAILS program. But I promise you, if you like the MAILS program, you're going you're gonna to like the, the EDLS program as well. As Dr. Lamb said, and Zach said, you all are focusing on your school. We will now turn your attention to the district level in the in the doctoral program and it will work for you we have some great instructors and i look forward to talking to you about it and so i'm not going to take any more of your time uh, dr lamb will invite me back i'm sure i'll get to meet you all again as we talk about the uh the next step for you because if you can it, i promise you the best students that we have in the doctoral program come from the males program what you're doing in males will will ex will be extremely useful and helpful as you move into that doctorate. So congratulations on finishing up this semester. I remember teaching 601. I wiped my brow when I was through 601. So I imagine your reactions as well, but you're in a great program. You've got great leaders and great instructors as well. So I'll stop, put my information on the side. Feel free to reach out to me. If you do call me on my cell phone, just preface, maybe preface it by having a text, just saying this is so-and-so. So I'll have a chance to give you a call back. Congratulations. We'd love to continue your education in Garner Webb. Thank you, Dr. Lamb. Thank you, Dr. Stone.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, I want to move through quickly tonight. Um, first person I want to introduce you tonight. I, I want to give each of your six, I want to give a shout out to all the 601 folks that are here with us. I think Dr. Stedman has a board meeting, but I will, I'll start with Dr. Hamilton for her comments tonight. Um, and Dr. Crawford and Dr. Nutting who have worked with, um, 601, the, the first time master's folks. And so Dr. Crawford, um, I saw you, I thought, so I'll start with Dr. Hamilton for, for comments to close out the semester. Thank you, Dr. Lamb. This has just been such a fabulous semester. Our group has worked so hard and we have talked as a group of 601 professors about how this is one of the strongest groups that we have ever seen come through and their scores and their APSL and APTEL have certainly been reflective of that. And as Dr. Stone was speaking a few minutes ago, I just couldn't help but think about the fact that, that what he is saying is true. You have worked hard and what you are doing is really and truly helping prepare you for that next step for those of you who are wanting to consider that. And I have to also reiterate that if you just go ahead while you're in the, the habit of being in school and doing the work, then that, um, you know, that that works and that goes on. Just don't ever forget what you've learned. These are some good foundational skills um, about um, PLCs, having um, norms and protocols and to, to lead groups. Um, just always remembering that um, when you think about things like guiding principles, if you are always respectful to everyone's faces and backs and do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, I think you'll find that you'll be a highly successful administrator. Thank you for choosing Gardner Webb and for letting us work with you. We're sorry we don't get to go on with you, but we know that you're going to do great things. Thank you, Dr. Hamilton. Dr. Crawford? Hey, good evening, uh, everyone. First, I want to say to my group, you guys have been uh, phenomenal. I'm going to miss you. Um, I'm sure Dr. Hamilton would have mentioned it, but um, just because we're not moving on with you, and your next class doesn't mean we want to always be there if you need an ear or whatever have you. So always please um, reach out. And then um, finally, I just want to say, you know, all the things um, that Dr. Hamilton mentioned are, are true and what this course and what this program will do is lay that foundation for you to be able uh, to walk right into, you know, your school and your next role and be successful. Um, I can tell you, I mean, I'm not a product of Gardner Webb, but all the skills um, that you are learning, um, I am, and in many cases, struggling uh, to uh, put into place um, as the principal of a turnaround uh, middle school. Um, I got a lot more, I got a few more swings at a hatchet uh, to, to go, um, but this isn't just um, theory. Um, it's theory mixed with a lot of practicality. So if you keep that in mind, um, you will you will be successful. So always reach out and you know have a great rest of the year and finish your app tell. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Netting. Hi everybody. I just want to uh, thank you. I most of you know that this was my first time involved with this class and with Gardner Webb. And so I've been along for the wild ride along with you guys. Um, special shout out to Dr. Hamilton. Um, it's pretty neat. She and I have never met face to face, but uh, I feel pretty close to her now. She's really been uh, great at um, helping me with the journey. And I've also never, this is the first time that I've ever been part of a class that was fully virtual. And um, I wondered how that was going to be, and I'm I'm pleasantly surprised at um, how we've all been able to connect and build relationships with each other, um, and I just look forward to continuing with Gardner Webb if I'm able to do that, so congratulations, and it's, it's almost the holidays, just a couple more weeks hanging there with the kids, and uh, you guys can breathe a sigh of relief. All right, thank you so much. All right. Dr. Revis, you're here tonight. You can represent you and Dr. Stedman. Well, good evening. And on behalf of Dr. Stedman and myself, I just want to echo everyone else's sentiments about 
Um, this group has been, and Dr. Stepman and I have talked about it several times throughout the semester, what strong students and candidates we have in our three classes combined. You guys have really produced some very, very strong work. I was absolutely amazed. I have to, I have to brag, every, every one of my candidates in 601 scored a perfect score on the APSL and all but one perfect score on the APTEL. The, the writing that you all have been able to produce has been unbelievable. And yes, when you enter that doctoral program, I hope you will thank uh, your 601 instructors for grilling that into your head about APA because it will come in handy for you. I encourage you to go on into the doctoral program. I've talked to some of you personally about that. Um, I'm so pleased to see Zach and Kathleen, former students of mine. Uh, once you're a student of mine, you're always a student of mine. And to see how successful they are in the program. Again, uh, you are very strong. You need to consider uh, continuing your education with, with Gardner-Webb. And uh, we have enjoyed this semester and look forward to hearing and seeing wonderful things from you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Evans. We appreciate the job that you've done um, with the um, the advanced students, the, the second master students. And so I, we appreciate what everybody's done for all of our students, first and second masters. And so I want to shift gears now. And um, I see that uh, Dr. Sanders is with us. Dr. Sanders, um, Dr. Sanders will be, for those of you in the five semester, 20 month program, first time master students, you will be moving to MEL 602, your research semester in, in the spring. It is a bear. Um, and so, but here's the good news. We had you work ahead this semester, as we told you. Um, Dr. Hamilton had you to do both the APCEL and the APTEL so that you will not have an evidence due in the spring. If you want to work on the OMA, um, Dr. Barnes, who is the coach for Dr. Sanders, will work with you on that if you want to. But we gave you some extra breathing room for your research and assessment semester, which is a, a very difficult semester as in all graduate programs is your research statistics semester. And so, Dr. Sanders, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Um, if you would like to say, I've got your shell pulled up here of what they can expect to see this spring. So if you'd like to talk about MEL 602, I'll open the floor for you. Well, I don't want to scare you off. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, we will break it down together, taking it piece by piece. So even if you look at the shell, I don't want you to start assuming anything because like I said, together we are going to go through the terminology. For some of you, it's just gonna be a refresher. For some, it might be brand new, but we will take it one step at a time together. Um, I will allow you opportunities to go back and we'll do reteach, retest. So we will make sure step by step together, you all will have a, an opportunity for total success. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. And so when you finish this semester and you find yourself at, at odds and not knowing what to do with yourself over the holidays, uh, I would suggest um, log in to CITIIRB and get started. You can use your Guard to Web credentials to get started on this. This is going to be your first major task is to do the IRB certification uh, on how to handle and treat data. Um, and so again, it's just CITIIRB um, and you go in and, and you can log in, you use your username and you set up a password and you log in and you're going to need to do um, you're going to need to do Guard to Web University, um, and um, you will need to do the basic course. Uh, it has 16 modules, 17 modules. It takes quite a while to do that. 
Um, if you're interested in doing that, I will provide that information to you after tonight on how to go in and exactly I'll screenshot it to make sure you get in the right place. If you could, if you could arrive in January with this already done, this will certainly help you not to get behind. I'll just tell you, Are you this, all done? Is, this is Everybody? about eight hours worth of work to, hey, to do these modules. Can you push cheap myself like a big boy? Um, you will need to do these. And so um, I will will go ahead and tell you that. So you will need to, to go ahead and get this done as soon as you can. All right, so that's 602. For those of you who are the 12 month, three semester program, you will be moving to MEL 603 um, and you'll be with Dr. Maraglia or myself. Uh, and so I am going to call on Dr. Maraglia. I'll pull up her shell right now. And she has a partner. Uh, as well, Dr. Caton, uh, but I will turn the floor over to Dr. Maraglia for her to talk to you about 603 and the two evidences due there. Good evening. It's so great to see everyone tonight, and I have to say, after hearing from my colleagues about your performance in 601, I am very excited to be working with you next semester. Um, Dr. Caton and I like to say that 603 is really trying to prepare you for that school administrator position. Um, most folks start out in the AP role, but every now and then you do have folks that uh, go straight to the principal seat, and we want to make sure that you are prepared for that. You do have two evidences. You have your OMA and you have your SKIP, but we also focus quite a bit on just the practical day-to-day -day role of being a school administrator. So along with completing your evidences, we also have you participating in activities such as sitting in an IEP meeting, um, conducting a, an ass assessment inventory of your school, um, what, what shape is your building in, uh, knowing how to run facilities, knowing how to make sure you are following the law, that is a big part of what we do. Uh, so we it's, it's going to be a little bit different from what you've experienced in 601, but we are here for you every step of the way, just as, again, my colleagues have been saying, because we want you to be successful as you go through 603, not only with your evidences, but we want you to feel like you are prepared for the role. And even if you don't know the all the answers, you know, where to find them, you, that you know you have a support system that you can call on to help you in difficult situations. So just really looking forward to the next semester. I'm so excited to hear all the positive comments. Thank you. <clears throat> so Dr. Caton and Dr. Miraglia will be teaching the bulk of 603. I may get to slip in and do one. But as Dr. Miraglia said, um, 603 is not a set and get. I'll stop my share. Um, there is a lot of coming and going, to and and froing. You know, interview an AP about due process. Go to HR about the the, the, the hiring process and employee assistance. Uh, sit in on an IEP meeting. Talk to your intervention chair. Do a facilities inventory. There's a lot of different things. 603 is about about operations, about how to actually run a school, how to have school every day. Um, it's law and finance is the heart of it, making sure that everything you do is legal. Um, that you know, I can't I can't keep you from getting sued. But those sports fans of you out there who understand this analogy is, is this is like what Al Davis said years ago: "Just win, baby." I can't keep you from getting sued. My job is to make sure you win when you do get sued, that you have followed the law. Um, and so it's, you know, my job is to keep you from losing your house. And so that's what we attempt to do in 603 is teach you the practical application of school law and finance, um, making sure you return, you, you turn your receipts in every day, making sure you understand all four of your budget codes, that you can't cross money, uh, how you can use positions. You can't, you can't mix different ones. You can't assign federal employees to do state tasks. Those kinds of things are, is what we will 
we will 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 have you to 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 learn. Hopefully, um, you will get out and, and do a lot of those things. And so that's what six o three about. Again, you have the OMA. The OMA is about building a legal, not a master schedule, but a legal master schedule, uh, a legal duty roster, and a, duty, and a legal supervision schedule that meets all federal, state, law, local board policy and best practices. Um, that's what we will will teach you to do in there is how that's what the OMA is about. It's about how to build a master schedule, because whoever builds the master schedule in your school is the person that's in charge. If it's the secretary, then the secretary is in charge. Um, and so you need to understand that the master schedule is the heart of your school. Who teaches what, where and when and why uh, is about what school is about. And so that's what we're going to do. The skip is about teaching you how to involve your parents for the purposes of increasing academic performance in your school. Just getting your parents to come to your building will not make your academics go up. There has to be a purpose behind it. Uh, we're going to teach you about that, how to build a marketing plan, how to involve parents in a positive way in your school. Uh, you know, uh, if just getting parents to come to your building would make test scores go up, everybody in the elementary would be, would be at 100 percent. Because I don't know why everybody has to bring their children to school every day in their car, but they do. Uh, you know, we have parents on campus all the time. As I tell all these nice ladies here in this nice upper class Lake Norman neighborhood that I live in, I don't know why in the world. I don't know how in the world you expect your kids to learn about sex if you don't let them ride the school bus. But that's just another story for another day. But, you know, everybody comes to school every day, but that doesn't make your test scores go up. We're going to try to teach you how to have parents come to your building for the positive reasons of making test scores go up. Uh, and so that's what we're going to teach you in 603. So that's where you've been, what you've got left to do and where you're going. Um, you've got one, two evidences due for those of you in the, the three semester program, the 12 month. Those of you who are in the five semester program, we had you go ahead and do your second semester evidence up front in case you get behind. But if you want to do an evidence in 603, Dr. Uh, Dr. Barnes will work with you to do the OMA. Uh, we can get you started on that one. Uh, most folks prefer to wait on that because they're so inundated. Basically, the CITI is like doing an evidence. Um, and so we, you, you've got to get that, you've got to get that knocked out. You, you've got to take that. I mean, that's not a Garden Web thing. Garden Web requires it, but that, that's a, a national thing for anybody conducting research has to get, uh, has to go through CITI IRB. Um, and so it will, you know, there are 17 modules that you've got to work your way through. You have to take a quiz and pass each one to go to the next module. It, it, uh, it's about eight hours of, of solid work to get through that. Um, and so when we add that to all the content that's already in 602, we have found that, that uh, it strains you to get it all done. But if, you, if, you're, if you're an overachiever, which I know some of you are, We'll certainly move you on to your next evidence. I'm only a, I'm only a minute and a half past our time. We're doing well. Um, is there anything else that any any questions anybody has? This group uh, enrollment is automatic unless your 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 enrollment will roll over unless you have either a AR hole that's accounts receivable. That's not me. Um, that's Becky Tony in student accounts. Uh, I can't help you. They won't, obviously, for privacy laws, they won't talk to me about that. Um, but if you don't get registered, it's either that or you've got an academic hold over in the graduate school with Dr. Brown. Um, so eat one of those two things. You didn't get some paperwork in and they did a provisional admit. You still haven't gotten it in. That would be an academic hold. Or an AR, which is an accounts receivable hold. I can't help you with either one of those because of privacy laws. But so if you don't get registered, otherwise you will be automatically, you will roll over from 601 to 602 in the 20 month program. You will roll over from 601 to 603. The books, I will send you that information. I went to the bookstore this week to make sure that they've got everything. I met with Paul. Um, everything should be in place um, for your books. Um, and so they've asked me to wait. Um, they've asked me to wait on, on that. And so I will send that out. Um, they don't want to get inundated with those right now. 
they're trying to do some other things, but uh, we will get you that. I'll probably get to you later this week. Um, does 603 need to do IRB? They should have done IRB in their first master's program. If they haven't done it, um, we'll probably catch you up for that in 605. Um, it is not part of 603. Um, we've moved it to 605 for those that, that might have missed it. Um, it. And it's possible that some folks went through their first master's program and didn't get it. Uh, that's, that's, that's entirely possible. Um, you know, it's not supposed to be, but my hair wasn't supposed to have fallen out. Uh, good looking man as me wasn't supposed to lose his hair this young, but uh, that's another story for another day. So don't, if you're in 603 next semester, don't worry about IRB. We'll do it in 605. Um, should they opt out of the bundle? Um, that's why I went to the bookstore to see if they were going to have the books on hand. Um, I think you can do better at Amazon. I really do. Um, I, I would say, I would say that, um, check with Amazon, make sure you get the fourth edition of the, the, uh, principal's guide to school law. If you're in 603, I'm going to put that out. As I said, I'll probably, I may put it out a little early, but just make sure you get the fourth edition. It's a Brown book. And I actually went over there and got one so I could show you on the screen. The principal's quick reference guide to school law, Hacha. Um, and so, and that's that man's name. I probably not. H A C H I Y A. I just call him Hacha. Um, fourth edition. It's the brown one, not the blue one that we've been using. It's the fourth edition one. And so, I think you can find them all on Amazon now. Um, that and um, uh, resources. And there's one book. Let me look right quick. Let me share my screen. Screen share. Okay. Uh, go back to course. Right here. Uh, Principal's Guide. This would be the fourth edition instead of the third is one you need. And then resource management for school administrators, Schilling and Tomile. T-O-M-A-L. That's the two you need for 603. And then the one you need, we have dropped down to just one book to try to save money. Research books are so expensive. We have dropped down to one book in 602 uh, to try to help with the, to get the cost back to, I didn't say it was reasonable, but it's better than it was. Let's see. Uh, let me go to 602. Right here it is. Research methods for education, privateria. Um, and there it is. And so I will send these out when I send the, tonight's recording. I will send the books that you need along with those to make sure. So again, we've stopped you. We did, we were using three books in this one. We're down to one now. Uh, it's not going to be a cheap book, but it's better than three. Um, Dr. Lamb, uh, if they. Dr. Lamb, if they wish, wish to opt out of the Bulldog One Bundle, when should they do it? Now, as soon as it'll let them. As soon as it will let them. Woo! Yee. That's what I was talking about. Research books are stupid expensive. Um, 145 to $165. Um, that's why we dropped down to one from three. It was over $500. So I apologize for it being $165, but that's better than 500. Um, and so I think that still saves you money on the Bulldog Bundle. Um, how much is it the Bulldog bundle per credit hour? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure they don't disclose that to us. The whole bundle was 192 this past semester. Okay, 192. So you save 30, save thirty dollars to buy it like this, I'd say. I don't know if you can get a used one of that. I don't know if I'd want to use one or not. But 
uh, ebooks are, are cheaper. So that's what that one costs on Amazon. Let's see. Uh, let's see what it costs on Amazon. I bought both of those two books for six so three for about eighty five dollars. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's about right. Um, so you can get this one for thirty seven fifty. They charged me sixty five dollars for it at the bookstore, by the way. Um, and so well they charged College of Ed that for it. Um, and so it's thirty seven fifty from Amazon for that one. And let's see what the other one costs. Adrian, we'll get to your question in just a second here. Uh, let's see what this one costs. Uh, and Dr. Lamb, I would just add that they'll probably keep that school law book through their career on the absolutely shelf and use it for years. Absolutely. And so this one is only. 42. So, yeah, exactly right. Tanya, how much of that was that total, Tanya, these two? It was about $82, $83. Yep. There you go. So, it's 42. You have Prime, there's no shipping. 42.50 and 37.50. So, that's 79.50 mm -hmm. plus tax. Yep. There you go. About 82 bucks, 83 bucks, something like that. That's a lot better than 192.50 through the bundle. So, I would go to Amazon and buy them if I were y'all. I know I'm not supposed to tell you that, but again, I'm not supposed to let a lot of stuff I say. Um, you know, we charge too much. Mine came in the how, mail today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so um, you do need your books and you will you will keep both of these books. Absolutely. You will keep, as Dr. Hamilton said, you will keep both of these books. You'll need your law book. Um, and that other one, again, It'll save you 30 bucks or so on it if you buy it through uh, the research. Search books are just stupid expensive. Statistics books are even worse. Uh, I'm, I'm ashamed of what I have to charge some of the doctoral students um, for, for those. I mean, some of those are $500 for one book. Uh, not very good. All right. So I'll stop my share. I'll send you these to make sure you have them. Adrian, you've got a question? Yeah, it's a real quick question. I was just wondering, as far as our work for 603, um, when will we be getting access to like our syllabuses? And syllabus? One week before you get in Blackboard, one week before the semester starts. That's a great question. So let me make sure I remind you of that date. That was going to be my last thing I had on my list to talk to you about. So, and I wanted to show you how to do that. So if you will do this, I don't like this, but it's what we got. So when you go to Web Connect, when you sign in, they've got an academic calendar here. Um, it used to be in kind of a graphic organizer. Now it's got pictures, I guess, you know, so... Monday, January the 8th is when our new term starts. Uh, first term grad, eight-week term. Let's see. Is that right? Or no. No, it starts the second week. 16-week uh, classes begin on, yeah, well, actually, but we start that Monday. We start Monday, January the 8th. So Monday, I guess Tuesday, January the 2nd, you will be let in to Blackboard and everything will be there. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, January the 2nd. The 2nd of January, you'll be able to get in. I'll send you your book information tonight so you'll know what books to get. But your syllabuses will be posted um, the day after New Year's. We'll have those out. We're working on those. I've already got the weekly schedule done. Uh, Dr. Miragli, I've already done the weekly schedule for 603. I'll be sharing that in the next couple of days. Um, and Dr. Sanders, if she's still with us, she's normally gets hers out pretty soon too. Um, 
we normally try to send those out before uh, the dates and the times before the syllabus, before the before Blackboard is ready, but that'll be up to Dr. Sanders. She'll determine. Dr. Sanders, do you know what night of the week you'll be meeting on? Is she still with us? She may have had class that she had to jump off and go to. Um, Dr. Miraglia, Dr. Miraglia, when, what night of the week are you going to do your 603 on? Wednesdays at 7. Wednesdays at 7. And if I'm teaching a section, Wednesdays at 7. We teach on, we teach 603 on Wednesday nights. Um, yeah, I, I probably need to be in church on Wednesday night. I could use some churching up, but uh, I go to church at, on Wednesdays at noon. That's one of the few good things about being on campus at Garden Web. We have Wednesday, our Wednesday services on at noon. And so I get to do that so I can have class on Wednesday night. Because uh, I like to be with the new folks on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. If y'all remember, you had to put up with me on Tuesday and Thursday nights. So that's why I teach on Wednesday nights. And uh, Dr. Kate and Miraglia actually work for a living. They actually are school administrators. And so Wednesday nights, only night that they're free during the week. So we always teach 603 on Wednesday night at 7. Uh, let me look and see. I might can that's our own version of church. Yeah, yeah. It's there's a lot of come to Jesus about those meetings. I can tell you <laughs> right now. Uh, uh, so let me go back here. Uh, let me go back, Doctor Sanders. Let's see. If I can discern what night of the week that she normally meets that class on. Mm, let's see. If I can find the Zoom link. Uh, All right, so I thought Tuesdays at seven. That would be my that would be my best guesstimate. She normally teaches the same night, so she teaches Tuesday at seven. So for those of you who are going to six oh two that had class at Tuesday at seven, it'll be the same. But remember, those of you going to six oh three, we always teach six oh three on Wednesday night at seven o'clock because of our schedules. And so you will either have Dr. Caton and Dr. Maraglia, or you will have me and whoever draws the short straw to have to work with me this spring. Uh, and so, yes, the still the same. We try to run everything the same where everything's due Sunday night. We work through Sunday, um, Monday through, you know, um, Monday through Sunday, and then Monday starts a new week. So everything's due on Sunday night as we've been doing this semester. That's a great question, too. We try to keep things consistent. We try to keep either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday night. But again, because of our schedules, we always teach 603 on Wednesday nights. And we always teach at 7. And so, as soon as you get the app tail done and all that, make sure, just a reminder, when you get your internship log done, don't put it in your DRF portfolio and task stream. Put it in your competency folio request and request uh, comments. If you put it into your DRF portfolio, I'll just send it back. Don't send it back again. Just it'll be it'll just say call back when you get done at the end of your program. You'll just upload all of them, put them in there. It won't hurt a thing. It'll be fine. But your semester logs, remember, until your last semester go in your competency folio where it says internship log. 
make sure you do your school of ed dispositions. I think about everybody's done those in your competency analysis and that you, everybody's do the APTEL and APSEL this semester. So make sure you get those wrapped up. Um, again, the day after New Year's, Blackboard should be available with your syllabus. 602 will be on Tuesday night at 7, 603, regardless of who the instructor is, will be on Wednesday night at 7. Um, I'll send the book information when I sit and send the video out for tonight. You know the deal. You heard from Dr. Stone. We'd love to have you start thinking about a doctoral program down the road. Um, but I think that's about it. We got our content done in 31 minutes and we've handled our questions. Anything, anybody have anything else? As Dr. Dr. Stone said, it is a family. We, our success, your success is our success. We want to see you get through the MSA program and, and get a job and, and change the lives of, of the kids out there in, in, in the business. We want you to, you know, self-actualize every how far you want to go. We're here to support you in that. That's what we're here for and what we do. Um, we are firm in that conviction and we appreciate you being with us. Grades, I don't know when grades will be available. Um, quite honestly, everybody in the registrar's office is either retiring or leaving. Uh, so I can't tell you the top three over there, the registrar, the associate and the assistant are all leaving. I talked with the registrar this evening. It, um, I think they're about all they're hoping to do is get the grades posted. I don't think official transcripts will be ready until after the first of the year um, for our graduates. And that's not going to be fun on licensure, but that's my cross to bear. Um, grades should be posted. I'm thinking it will be the week of the week leading into. Let me look at my calendar here. So final grades are due on like the 16th, I think. Yeah, I'd say final grades will be out by the 22nd is what the registrar told me today. They were going to try to have the official transcripts, but they, she told me today and said official transcripts will not be available on the 22nd because they'll, they're going to work on getting grades out. So hopefully grades will be out by Friday the 22nd. If not, it'll be probably the next Friday but they should be out. Miss um, Gates, after 30, how many years has she worked at Gardner Webb? Um, 22, 40, coming up on 40 years, I guess. She's retiring. Um, and the assistant and the associate, I understand, are also most likely to uh, be leaving as well. So I'm, uh, they're kind of shorthanded over there. So they've already told me to duck, gave me the heads up. Um, the licensure people are the people that, who need their official transcript to file for their licensure. But uh, it, it won't, in, in, in the end, it shouldn't be too bad a problem for them. So hopefully we'll get that done. But uh, get all your work in and your instructors will turn their grades in on time. I'll make sure of that. If they don't, I'll just make something up. If you, if they don't get them in, I'll give you an A. And we'll move on. We get ours in on time. I don't like getting them ugly messages from the provost about grades not being in. So we'll get them in. All right. Let me check. Yep. I will. I'll have the CITI information in the email along with the books, so that y'all will be ready to go. I didn't. Want, if I send this stuff before the meeting, then everybody's confused in the meeting. So I will send you. The CITI link so that you can get started on that again. 17 modules. It takes a while to work through those. Um, but, you know, that's very important that you get that done. If you don't, if you haven't done it before and you're moving to 603, we'll catch it in 605. It'll be okay. But 602 folks do need it this semester because you're going to be doing some research. Uh, yeah, because I, I did my master's in 2005. I don't remember doing the CI. TI. I don't probably didn't back then. You that's notice that I've only ago. been a, I've only been a member for eleven years. Um so that's only been around the best I can figure that particular version for, for eleven years. We had to do something, but now you remember we I rode to school on horses. Um I it's been so long since I was in graduate school. You do understand 
uh, that I finished my doctorate more than 30 years ago. Um, so you can imagine how long I did punch cards uh, in my master's program. We had the the first computers and it was big as the house I'm sitting in right now. I did my my, my first master's on punch cards. Uh, that's how old I am. And so a lot of things have changed over over that time. Uh, we did some version of it, but not like this. So as far as I know, Gardner Webb has only participated in this version for the last 11 years. So it's not if you were more than like 2012 or 13, you've probably not done this. If it was since then, since you did, if it, if it was for then when you did your master's, um, you probably didn't, probably didn't do this. It is a requirement now that everybody has to have it done. Um, you can go ahead, the 603 people can go ahead and do C CITI because you, you get, you get individual certification and you carry it with you for five years. And so that would be a good thing. Uh, I'm going to put it in for everybody. I, I would suggest that if you've not done it, go ahead and do it. Uh, it's going to really help you with, you know, ha handling data, sensitive data. You know, we're going to cover a lot of it in 603 with FERPA, privacy, you know, kids' records, all those, those kinds of things. It's the same stuff. Belmont report, all those things. And so... Uh, I would suggest even if you're going to 603 that you, you should try to do it. If not, we'll catch you in 605 to make sure. But, yeah, you should you should be doing that CITI. If you're handling any kind of student data, you need to have you need to have that those credentials. It's an actual certificate that you get. Let me see if I can share my screen and show you what it looks like. Uh, Um, Dr. Lamb, excuse me, while you're looking, I texted Dr. Sanders and she said, correct, she will do 602 at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hamilton. So confirm 602. Uh, we are confirmed for... Six o'clock, seven o'clock on Tuesdays. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so this is what you get. You get a you get a certification. This is my latest update one I've done, um, all the different ones that I've done and the refresher course. And you get a certificate that looks like this. It's good for five years. So this is what you've got to have. Uh, and you can close now. Uh, Let me see if I can figure out. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's what it looks like. So that's what you're going to need. And I've got a picture of all of somewhere. I've got a picture of all the different modules that you have to do, but I'll make sure I include that in the email. Let me check. You got to do the refresher course. That's a good one. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Jeffrey asked, my certificate expired. Do I have to take the course? Do you just have to do the refreshers? All you have to do. That's a, just like I did the last time. Uh, I've taken two different courses, one for like y'all and one for like me. Um, and then um, I just had to do the refresher. So, yes, uh, you can take the refresher course if you've had certification. It's a whole lot. It doesn't take near as much time to do it. That's a great question. But, yeah, everybody needs to do IRB. Um, it is. It's it's the way of the world now. Um, you don't want to get sued for handling. I, I, you know, those of you who are in the job now, like Zach's in the job, and of course we've got uh, Dina's with us. I see her down right hand corner. I mean, she handles sensitive data every day, um, and you got to know the rules. 
I mean, and you get called on stuff that you just would never think about. Just talking like two two colleagues talking talking out in the hallway or at lunch or something. You you know it, it it you know FERPA you know Federal Education Privacy Act is so strong with data. I mean, IRB teaches you all that stuff. Dina, I'll, I'll let you speak to how often you handle sensitive data uh, in the role. I all the time. I, I mean, we, you know, we, like I said, we handle data, you know, sensitive data all the time. Um, you know, there's a lot of confidential files, a lot of confidential things. Um, and that's one area personally that I feel like I'm excited about 603 because, and all of that, because that is an area that I'm right now depending on somebody else to help support and guide me. And I feel like I need to know that area, the, you know, um, the organizational piece, I need to know that better and the functions of, of school law. Um, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, things that occurred this year, and I feel like that is an area that I need to be better at. Unfortunately, that's the part that, 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 you know, it, law or finance and those two go together. I mean, that's, you know, that's what like, gets you nowadays. And like you said, I want to stay out of jail. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to be paying very close attention in 603. Yes. I mean, this is about not losing your house or your freedom. That's free right. <laughs> That's what we talk about every week. Our goal every week in 603 is for you not to lose your house or your freedom. Mm -hmm. Seriously. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> everybody wants to sue nowadays over, over yes. everything. Yes. Uh, again, true. I can't keep you from getting sued. My job is to make sure that when you do, you win. I hate to put it that way, but it's just the truth. It sounds so crass and you know, but it, it's 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 the way of the world now. Um, and so like like Dr. Miraglia said, our job, you know, this is not a, a, you know a, an academic course in terms of philosophy or any of that. This is how do you run school every day and, and, and keep your job and make sure that your people don't do dumb things that get themselves or you in trouble. Yeah, every day. Um, Dr. Sane works with me sometimes. He's left the school business and works for um, Curriculum Associates now. He's a EC intervention specialist, and they're paying him ridiculous money to travel all over the country. But he's still involved in a lawsuit in Lincoln County, where two people, two of his teachers, were standing out in the hall talking about an exceptional children kid. I mean, they're going to lose. It's just that simple. Um, I mean, it's 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 really difficult, and learning how to handle sensitive information, data, research, what you can do with the students' test scores, how you can use them, those kinds of things, along with FERPA privacy laws, it's real important that you learn that stuff. Really important. Uh, and IRB gets you down that, gets you started on that road. Uh, real, real important. Most important thing for 602, uh, I can tell you right now. Is, is, is to get that under your belt. Adrian, you've got another question? Yeah, just real quick. Um, so the IRB, you said everybody has to do it, but the 603, we don't have you to can wait about it until next. You can wait till 605. If you okay. choose to, you can wait till 605. Since you've got two evidences to do this semester, you can wait. Okay, I just want I thought I heard you say that. I yeah, just want to you can sure. wait, or you can, again, 602s, y'all got to get on 602s, this is the requirement for you to, to pass 602s. You've got to take it. Uh, 603s, you can wait to 605 if you want to. Um, but that, that's kind of up to you. We're trying to pace your, we try to pace things out for you so that you don't get over overwhelmed in one semester. The good thing about, about the, at, the, the SOP when you get to 605, it's just a compilation of the first five of the evidences. It shouldn't take you too long. Um, if it takes you more than about two hours, you didn't do the first five right. Um, so you've got time in 605, even though it's short time, because you've got, you've got the break on either side, you know, you've got, you've got some extra time. You can wait to 605 to do it if you're, if you're overwhelmed in 603? Yes, that's a good question. 
If you complete your CTI at the same time you're working through 603, would that count as additional hours towards CEUs? Absolutely. Yeah, you can use you can use CITI as CEUs as, as certificate uh, renewal units. Yep, you sure can. You get your certificate. All right, good question. For NC licensure, do you need to take the Praxis 5412 exam for certification? Not yet. Uh, you will have to, after August 1st, you will, but as long as you finish by August 1st, you won't have to. Uh, now, that begs the question, you folks that are in the five semester program that won't be done by then, supposedly y'all will get grandfathered in, but we won't know until, we won't know until August on that one. There's a waiver right now, and it's supposed to be a waiver that grandfathers y'all in. For the, those of you who are in the 12-month, three-semester program, y'all will be done the last Friday of July. You won't have to worry about it either way. For those of you in the five-semester program that won't finish until, what, next spring? Um, don't know. Uh, it's coming back in August, but now whether they'll, because you're already in the program, will they make you take it or not? I don't know. I wouldn't sweat it either way. We've never had, let me knock wood here. We've never had a person to guard the web to fail it, by the way. Let me say that again. We've never had a person to fail, ever. Not in this the last 13 years. Not, not in modern times. We have not had not one. Um, we, we qual, I know y'all don't know this, but we crosswalk all of these all the things from the praxis with ISLIC and all the other standards, we crosswalk those through the evidence is to make sure that all that stuff has been covered. Um, that was a year of my life I'll never get back, crosswalking all those standards. Uh, but we got CAPE covered, we've got ISLIC covered, we've got praxis covered. No matter what exam gets thrown at you, you've had it in through your evidence work. We crosswalked them to make sure. See, that's the only advantage I know of being old is is I piloted this program in 2010 and crosswalked all these standards when we went to the portfolio system. What yeah. about South Carolina? You got to take it. South Carolina, you've always had to take it in South Carolina. That's not changed. You will have to take the practice. So I said we've never had anybody to fail. Half of our people take it already. South Carolina and the EDCI people have to take it already. The group that I had this semester, the doctoral group in EDCI, told you there's a quirk in the law. The EDCI people have to take it to get their curriculum instruction license. They have to take the administrative practice. Always been that way. My wife did 35 years ago when she did hers. And so um, South Carolina people, you will take it and you will pass, as you always have. Um, but yes, yeah, South Carolina has always taken it. North Carolina, you've had a waiver on it for 13 years, which will expire this August. And then they'll have to start, North Carolina people have to start taking it again. But it's not a problem. It's not like the old, what was it, NTE, the one that I had to take a, a million years ago that lasted all day, um, was an eight hour exam. And you had to go some college in the area and take it. It lasted all day. And, and so, cost five hundred dollars. And cost five hundred dollars. Yes, it did. I thought I was going to die. You understand that was as much as I paid for the entire doctoral program that I was in at Chapel Hill. It yes. cost just as much as my classes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's amazing. Um, yeah, y'all pay right now for what doctoral program at Garden to Web is six hundred and what is it six hundred and fifteen dollars a credit hour. Um, I paid thirty dollars a course at Chapel Hill for a three hour course. That's ten dollars a credit hour. Let me say that again. I paid ten dollars a credit hour. Of course, teachers didn't make the fifteen thousand dollars a year, and principals didn't make but twenty back then. Uh, that's but still it's not equitable it's it's way too much money nowadays but absolutely that exam costs five hundred dollars i remember 
because I didn't, that was, that was over half of my bring home pay that month. I brought home $800 a month and my, and that exam cost $500. That'd be like 50,000 nowadays. <laughs> uh, not quite that much, but it'd be like 5,000. Seriously, it cost $500. I think the Praxis now called squat. It's not, it's like, is it 160? I think it's like 160 now for the Praxis, which is still money. But that's why I said we try to shave a little money off textbooks to save you some money on that. So you got to take the, if you have to take the exam at the end, but it's, it's not price prohibitive and it doesn't take that long to take it either. All right. Good questions. Well, as always, we appreciate you. We really do um, appreciate you choosing us, and, and we know how hard you work, how much time you put in it. We're appreciative of that. It's reflected in the quality of the work that you do, and, and we we want you to be prepared when you when you face the world. We want you to be ready, and we know that you'll represent us well. It's always good to see you all, and we will be back online with y'all right shortly after the first year. So later tonight from me, you'll get this recording. You'll get your books for either 602 or 603 and you seen what they'll cost you. And I'll send you the link where you can go in and register for your IRB and you can take it. You, you 602s, you're going to have to do it this semester. 603s, you can do it now or you can wait. And if you've already done it one time and expired, you can do the renewal course, which is much shorter. All right. Give yourself a hand. Y'all have done great this semester. We appreciate you being with us. Mel's faculty, MSA faculty, thank you um, for what you do for them and for me. I appreciate it. Everybody, happy holidays. I'll, I'll be clean shaven the next time you see me, according to my wife. Merry Christmas. <laughs>